Hey, today's episode of the Sunday Night Talk. Three, two, one. Today's episode of the Modified Sunday Night Talk is here. It's ready, and we're going to get into how it's modified in just a second. Hey, if you haven't subscribed to the Running It Back show here on YouTube yet, do so. Give it a subscribe. It helps the channel, and we have grown a little in the last month or so. All my stand-up clips are on there. All my interviews are on there. All the shorts are on there as well. Speaking of stand-up, if you want to see me doing live stand-up comedy this week, May 5th, 8 p.m. I'm in Burbank, California at Flappers Comedy Club in the main room. So come on out. Come see a show. Today on the show, Jem the Baker joins me. She's been on the show before, but not for a Sunday night talk. I'm modifying the Sunday night talk this off-season. We're doing some shorter hits, some shorter interviews, and bringing in some different guests to get their perspective on what they do in the off-season, how they feel about their teams, and any just storylines that have intrigued us. While no games are going on. It's really fun. Not to mention, we get into a little bit of baking talk as well. Fun stuff. How are you this off season? Let's start putting some ideas in our head. Let's get ready for it. Let's be positive, people. All our teams are undefeated right now. Here we go. Here is me and Jem the Baker on the Sunday Night Talk. All right, we are recording this Sunday afternoon. Jem the Baker is joining me. She's back. back. Thanks for coming back, Jem. She's at Baker underscore Raider at, on Instagram. We have the draft to talk about. We have Raiders to talk about. Right. Most importantly, we have some baking to talk about as well. Because, you know, I follow you on Instagram. You're very active on yes. Instagram, not only with all your baked goods, all your uh, cooking extravaganzas, but also with like the history. You're putting up all these historical posts going into draft day as well. So catch me up where you are on LA sports right now, because so much is going on. Oh my gosh. West Coast, Dodgers, Lakers, USC, and now Raiders, of course, which I count as LA sports actually. I, yeah, I, <laughs> I'm kind of all over the place. I, um, well, I got into a couple arguments with, I put up a, a pretty cheeky video for Charger fans about how they couldn't fill the virtual draft screen with all, with fans. Like I there saw that. Fans. I saw that. That was, I, that know, was pretty good shots fired there. Yeah. I understand that was definitely a petty post and it probably wasn't fully true, but you know, <laughs> get, it got some engagement. You fully yeah. accepted LeBron as a Laker. Where are you standing on LeBron right now? Yeah, I mean, I, I'm still a Laker fan. Um, I was really excited when they won in 2020. And I like LeBron as a person and a player. I think, you know, I grew up, I mean, I grew up in the Kobe era. So it's, mm -hmm. um, it's, it feel it feels like I'm a little bit more removed from the Lakers now. Because I do spend a lot more of my time on the Raiders and the Dodgers. But, um, but yeah, I mean, I, I, I've embraced him. I think when he first came to LA, I was like, I don't know, but yeah, I, I mean, he is one of the greats. Yeah. He, it does definitely seems like he's made some foundations with the LA sports base in the last couple of years. Like the bubble championship was, was good, but there were no home games for that. We didn't get to fully, right. fully see what he was like in LA. And now it seems like he is, he almost seems like the second wife. Like, you know, yeah. you, had, you had Kobe, we had Magic, we had Kobe, and now LeBron. And it's almost kind of like he's moved in. He is the, the relationship is working. Okay, there's some bumps in the road, but overall, right. everything seems copacetic. So, he's a good dad, yeah. He's a good dad, right, right. Yeah, we see him at a couple soccer games, right? He's bringing yeah. sodas for the team. Okay, right. all right. And then depending on how the playoff run goes this year, that yeah. could really solidify his role in, in uh, the LA sports space. So, well, before we get to Raiders and draft, we had, I had a little bit of a angle going for you. And as we kind of come to find this week, we hit a snag. So you being the dessert baker that you are, I thought it would be interesting if I bake something, cause you know, I bake stuff from time to time. And I was like, what if I bake Jem the bakers, <laughs> some cookies and I yeah. get her critique. And as we find out the U S mail, somehow held my cookies hostage. They made it to you. Is there any cookie update? 
so I, I think what happened is um, my apartment complex is wonderful generally, but, and they're very attentive. And if they, if, if you're, if there's a package that sits for like even a few hours, they might like take it to the office because they, ah. they don't want anything stolen. Um, there's a, a mail room with lockers, but the USPS for some reason, like tends not to use that. So there's this whole complicated system, mm. but I think, I think basically your cookies are safe. Um, okay. hopefully, but they they're are sealed. So I, I think they're going to be it, still in good shape for, for eating. Yeah, they should be. I'm definitely planning on, on eating. Okay. All, so, we, so we have something to check back on. Yes. We'll have an on update the, on the cookie critique. All right. So here's a couple <laughs> cookie questions I got for you. And then I have a desserts challenge that yeah. I want to ask you while we're at it. Okay. So right now, what are your, the baking demands on you? Cause you send out baked goods that are sports related. So what's your week like as far as your baking schedule? Yeah. So I feel like every time um, I went through a period where I didn't bake quite as much because I've, I've also been like trying to finish my dissertation um, and I tend to procrastinate bake, if you will. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I, every time I post a video or a picture of like the, the biggest demand when it's not the holiday season is definitely like the Raider logo cookies, the sugar mm -hmm. cookies. Um, and those are, those are good because they ship well. Um, they're not too, they're not too complicated to make. There's some time involved, but um, people like I've brought them to tailgates before and people always really appreciate those. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I get like a request for like a Raider cake, like a birthday cake here and there. But I think the cookies are so versatile that um, those are by far the best seller. Ah, okay. And yeah. then what is just you personally, what's your ideal cookie? Would you say you're a like sugar cookie, peanut butter, nuts? Is there something in you where yeah. you're like, let me just, let me have a plate of these and a glass of milk and that's all I need. Is there an ideal? Is there a number one? Is there a Marcus <sighs> Allen of cookies to you? That okay, so I think the the complicated part of me wants to say the abuelita Mexican hot chocolate cookies that I make are I I think humbly they're hmm. amazing. <laughs> oh wow, interesting pick! I didn't think that was coming out of you. Yeah, I but I also like it. Really is a tie. So the there the baker that is on nailed it the actual like expert baker, Jacques Torres, he has a chocolate chip cookie recipe. And the secret is the balance of cake flour and bread flour. All right, well, this is setting you up nicely for the desserts challenge <laughs> that I have put together for you. You know, I got some tough questions for you before we get to a football talk. I don't want to give you a panic attack, but here we go. Oh, all right. I got, I got five questions for you. All right, here, let's start with number one. And I want you to rank these three. Okay. Cookie, brownie, cupcake. Give me your top three. It's a bit of a Mount Rushmore of sugary goods. Okay. Cupcake, not cake. Uh, cupcake. Yeah, the little like uh, wax paper you put in the little in individual thingies. The <laughs> Okay. Like what your okay. mom would bring on your birthday to school. <laughs> right, yeah. And, a, and then had, one kid has a nut allergy and freaks out. Oh God. I can't even imagine being a parent now. We had, <laughs> we had a weird tradition where we would bring donuts, but I don't know why we did that. Mm. But, um, my, I would say if it's a cupcake and not cake, then I would actually go cookie cupcake brownie. Oh really? Mm. Yeah. Um, cake is my favorite food of all time, but it, but it has to be actual cake. Ah, okay. Cookie cupcake brownie bringing in the bronze medal. All right, well, this leads me into the next question. <laughs> Pro or con, ice cream cake? I would say pro. Yeah, I would say pro. Mm. Um, because I do like ice cream. Now, my my partner and I have an argument about whether cake or ice cream is better. Um, it's a fierce right. argument. I've, I've noticed ice cream cake brings out a lot of arguments in people. Yeah, I've met people it, who hate it, and my response is always, I think we're out of problems. <laughs> this is our yeah. arguments as we argue about ice cream cake. How can you right. hate ice cream cake? I thought this was America. 
So <laughs> it's very interesting how people get very angry. You can have anything and everything together. Yes. <laughs> yes. So you're pro. You're, is there a particular ice cream cake? Because it really only seems mm. like Baskin Robbins is the only one I can think of that produces these. Maybe I'm wrong, but it seems- Dairy like Queen makes a good ice cream Dairy cake. Dairy Queen. Interesting. That's good. Yeah. Um, yeah. Dairy Queen is really a dark horse as far as like desserts, I think. Mm -hmm. um, I'd agree. You have to know what to get. But like, so I get a blizzard with cookie dough and Oreos and it's, it's pretty good. Yeah. It's pretty magical. Is the, is the McFlurry anywhere in there for you? So here's my problem with good. McFlurry. I can do an Oreo McFlurry. I don't like when M&Ms are frozen. Mm. Um, Cause you, I want an M&M to like melt in my mouth. Yeah. And when they're that hard. cold, you get this like weird texture. I don't, I'm not as big a fan of that. Oreo, yes. M&M, no. All right, next challenge. We're all familiar with the game, Mary Fuck Kill. However, yes. I have changed it a little bit. It's called Consume, <laughs> Eat in Your Car, or Give Away to the Neighbors. Oh, I love this. Okay, here are your three candidates. Lemon Bar, Ooh. Cheesecake, mm. Custard. Custard. Oh. And again, your categories are consume, eat in your car by yourself, or give it away. <laughs> okay. And and are these neighbors that we like or um I'm gonna go pick your standard run of the mill neighbor. You don't have any problems with them, but maybe they've never been over for a holiday to your house either. Or if they have, it's been one time. So, you know, neutral neighbor. Okay. We said lemon lemon bar cheese. So I make I make an award winning cheesecake. My mom Ooh. stole the recipe from her ex boyfriend's mom when she was like <laughs> her ex boyfriend's mom. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, and it's won at the L.A. County Fair. Like we okay, like we love this okay, cheesecake. Yes. So I would, I would probably give that to the neighbor because I you know want to present my best. Um, I probably consume the lemon bar because i think and, and i think those are like a social treat mm -hmm. um and can be done well and i'd probably eat the custard in my car um <laughs> and i'd probably be an animal about it right right yeah that's what i meant yeah. by that category like where would you just go crazy in your car with the windows yeah. up on a custard Absolutely. wow yeah the lemon bar i feel very i don't know i feel very um apprehensive on the lemon bar the it, lemon bar is like Canadian football of desserts to me. Like you would never choose it. You're still going to eat it. Right. But you would never choose it. And interesting, you went with the giveaway uh, category as like a positive. I went with it like get rid of this thing. Give it away. Yeah, I, I hear with, that. Like yeah. let me present it to someone because this is good. Interesting you went that way. I might have to use this dessert challenge on like every guest from now on. It's That's a really I, – I like these categories a lot. There's so I got I got two more. Okay. And this one is a, the most creative. What is the most underrated dessert? Okay. The most underrated dessert. I feel like a lot of people, when they think cake, they're like, I just want yellow and chocolate frosting. And that's fine. Um, but I think chocolate cake really is like the dessert of desserts. And people kind of put it in the like everyday category ah oh, i see just straight up classic chocolate cake huh yeah i think i think it can be done if it has like the right filling and the ganache topping and like the fudge frosting i mm -hmm. it's really a showstopper when it's treated as like an everyday like bakery item what are your has to be. thoughts on <laughs> flan <laughs> I feel like we've been pitched flan for the last 25 years and I still don't fully know what it is. I don't yeah. know if I like it or not. I've had it. I don't know. What do you, do you have thoughts on flan as a expert baker? Yeah. Okay. There's two kinds, right? Or there's probably more, but I feel like there's two distinct kinds. I think there's two kinds. There's uh, type one diabetes and type two diabetes. <laughs> for flan. I'll check my yeah. cookbook. Last category or last question before we do the actual draft. All right, this one's going to be tough. Okay, you got to choose one, pro or con, Jimmy G. And I'm going to take the other one. Okay, seems like you're overly pro right now. Yeah, 
I mean, okay. so I could take Khan if we want to play a That's big up game. To you. you, whatever you feel the strongest on. I mean, I, I think I'm pro just because, okay. um, I mean, I, I try to be optimistic. Like mm-hmm. I, I think, um, I think we have a, a more complete team. I think he's got some weapons. Um, I think he knows, you know, the system. I think Josh McDaniels is really a system dude. And that's so evident from the draft, I think. Um, so yeah, I, I would, I, I'm excited. Um, okay. Overly pro. All right. Yeah. Okay. I'll try and take the con here. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Uh, here's, here's the con. Um, I don't know if I've seen a good game from Jimmy G with the exception of that one um, Packers game in the playoffs with the 49ers where while he was still managing the game, he had like two or three great plays, Mm -hmm. but that's about it. I've seen from him now other con point. I need to see if he's willing to take a hit. Yeah. I'm a little nervous because we saw this with Derek Carr last year. It's like, I don't think he wanted to get hit. No, oh, he was absolutely not. Very, yeah. very apprehensive. Yeah. And he would either throw it away or throw an interception or something. So I don't know if Jimmy G wants to get hit. I have to see that. And my other con is I'm not 100% on Josh McDaniels yet. I yeah. wanted him fired last year in October. Yeah. I was out of my mind. And I was like, what is this man still doing in the building? Take away oh, yeah. his card. And, um, so I, I don't know about, I'm very nervous about this marriage of Josh McDaniels and Jimmy, Jimmy G. So I'm going to go with that con. And my last con is I'm halfway convinced no one handsome can be good at sports. <laughs> mm, and, you know, this is a fair point. This you is know? your best con. Yeah. Right, right. I, he's too good looking. <laughs> he's like, I've got things. I got to protect this face because I got a career after football here. I'm wearing tailored suits. And I'm growing half a beard. I have things to think about after this game. So I'm going to go that con too as well. I hope I'm wrong on everything. Sometimes though, let me (laughs) make a pro out of my own con. Sometimes really good looking people are dumb and he doesn't know he's good looking. That's true. Like, fuck it. I'm running for 50. And they muddle through life. Yeah. Exactly. He just falls ass backwards because I did my Jimmy G research. If you remember in that chief Super Bowl. He was one overthrown pass away from taking the lead in that game. People forget That's about right. that pass. He could have been the hero, or maybe Mahomes just has to make a miraculous comeback. But that was a pass that could have been completed, given a little a little change. The other thing with Jimmy G is some people are like this. I've noticed this with hot girls, too. Some guys just look like they're thinking about something dumb. Like he looks like he's thinking about dumb things in his head. He's thinking about cats tipping over glasses of water. He's thinking about balloons being popped behind someone's eye. He looks like he's thinking about something dumb. That's just my, my Jimmy G dissertation. How do you guys think they invented sports? (laughs) (laughs) Right. I can see him saying that on the sideline. Yeah, probably. (laughs) All right. Let's talk draft now. The draft started Thursday night. The Raiders draft seventh. Um, I I kind of liked the setting of the draft this year. It was outdoors. It was in Kansas was City. Yeah. It seemed like there was more fans than before, like where we have just the tables of like the GMs and stuff making phone calls. Um, yeah. It almost seemed like we had like Coachella for fat football fans. It it looked, yeah, it did look a lot. like It looked kind of fun. That big, it did look like a festival. Um, yes. And, and Motley Crue was really good afterward too. I know that's like. I was ahead. wondering, did they? This was set up perfectly for musical acts. Yeah. Um, so yeah, the the what was it? The second night, I think Motley Crue played, and they were awesome. Yeah, which makes me think like there's something here with the draft as far as off season events for the yeah. NFL. Like the draft could really be something fun that we would tune into for exactly like a music festival. We got a weekend of draft. And I also like how rounds two and three, they, the rules don't apply and they have like anybody announcing the pick. All these like kind of content fun. creators. I was like, um, when are we going to get asked? <laughs> like, yeah, right. Let's, yeah. let's, let's uh, zoom someone in or like, let's have some fun stuff. Like let's, let's make a show out of it. And then yeah. I thought like, doesn't the schedule get revealed in, in May? Like we know the teams, but we don't know the dates of everything yet. Right. 
So that yeah, could, think, that could be our next event on television for the NFL. Have this I, big reveal party. That'd be cool. Yeah, I think like people already like get together for the schedule reveal. Like they might as well capitalize on that. Right. I'm really hoping there's a couple games on there. Like that be my might be my game type of thing that I want to go to. Yeah. Like, okay. Let's hope for the date of this one is something yeah. that works out. So I have a I have my fingers crossed on a couple matchups. One home one, one away one. So we'll see. What are we'll the cities the that you're hoping to? Uh, I want to go to the Raiders at Bears game. Yes. That's the one I'm hoping for. Love so I hope it We're going to Chicago next week. Really. I, oh, excellent. So excited. Yeah. I love it. Some I yeah. have family members there. My girlfriend is from there. So oh, yes. We're, I'm hoping for October. That would be awesome. Yeah. Oh, that's the best time that's to go to That's the best Chicago. time to go there. Yeah. I'm hoping for that. If it's in another date, then I might have to just tough it out. But I'm yeah. hoping for that. Get a big well. coat. <laughs> big coat. I'm ready. I have Raiders gear ready to go. And yeah. I will be fully prepared when a beer gets thrown at my head. Yeah. Fair. Okay. So the Raiders drafted seventh. Their first round pick was Tyree Wilson, Texas Tech defensive end. Had a great suit, Tyree Wilson. Oh, I got to say. The fit. Yeah. Great suit. Yeah. yeah. Um, how did you feel about that? We drafted defense early, which I think was the right call. I, yeah, I was, I was like totally unsure of what they were going to do going into the draft, which made me nervous. But as the draft like went along, I was like, okay, they, they had choice. Like it was kind of unclear. Are they going to draft Tyree? Are they going to draft Christian Gonzalez? Um, are they going to draft, uh, the dude from Georgia? Mm -hmm. Um, and I, you know, I was like kind of nervous about the Carter from Georgia. Um, cause I, I, you know, I believe in redemption stories and I like, I think everyone deserves a second chance, but I also, you know are a Raider second chances. <laughs> right. So it's like on the one hand, like perfect, he's perfect for the Raiders, but on the other, we also have had a lot of drama and I, um, I don't know, just player wise too. Like, I didn't think he had the best pro day and I was really happy with the Tyree pick. Mm -hmm. um, I think he's a big dude. I mean, he picked up Roger Goodell like it was nothing. <laughs> Good pickup. Good hug yeah. pickup. You're like, right. Just so, um, yeah. So I'm happy to have him across from Max. Yeah. The other thing, you know, it got kind of lost in all the drama of the season last year was the defense was really struggling last year. Yeah. We really needed defensive help. There was games where just – the uh, opposing team would just go down, uh, go down the field on them, and be like, "Come on, stop them!" Third down, uh, they converted. <sighs> uh, it was so down, inconsistent. They converted. Yeah, it was tough. I, I think the defense really needed help. What else? I had two more picks that jumped out at me, just as far as like that I liked. What pick mm -hmm. jumped out at, at you from rounds two on? Oh, definitely um, the my, Michael Mayer. I kept. I kept oh, me call. too. That was my pick. I mean, I didn't know I, if it's Meyer or Mayer either. <laughs> Michael. Myers. I hope it's my be because then we can do all the Halloween references. Yeah. Be like, oh, he's coming for you. We could play yeah, the music. That's like Raider like as ever. Um, yes. No, I mean that's what what impressed me overall about the draft is I could see a reason for pretty much every pick, and it seemed like the picks they made were the best or one of the best in that position. Mm -hmm. um so like that's i think that's why they went um and that's clearly why they they took meyer because he he was expected to go sooner um and then even the returner that they took the wide receiver um, uh, um trey tucker I trey tucker here. they had two i know that was round. like yeah kind of controversial but he's he's the fastest mm. so that okay. was to me that was like an al davis pick um, <laughs> right <laughs> Just yeah, pick okay. the fastest. You know, they should just start giving like awards like during the combine for like yeah. fastest stuff. And like whoever has the fastest 40 gets the Al Davis award. Yeah. That, and then like yeah. they could wear like a little emblem on their jersey that whole year or something. Yeah. I would be oh. for that. That would be cool. Just I'd we be, can know I like want that. Yeah, award. we can know like little cool stats about players within the games, like, oh well, you know, he had the longest throw in the combine. He threw yeah, 75 yards. Right. And we just like that guy's got an arm. Yeah. Um, I like Mike Meyer too. Something also Notre Dame, mm -hmm. huge tight end, just a big tight end white dude for some yeah. reason. Mid Gives me a throwback to the Kyle Brady's of the old days and the oh, yeah. Chimeras. <laughs> just a big, <laughs> just farm white dude. Midwest, tight end. 
definitely yeah. eats meat and potatoes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Just give me a meat and yeah. potatoes guy. Yeah. So I, I like that as well. And then I thought the Aiden O'Connell Purdue quarterback pick was interesting. I was like, what, what are you going to do with this guy? What's going on? Cause we have, we yeah. gotten rid of, um, who was the QB that came in for car at the end of the year? Um, Jared Stidham. Stidham. What's going on with him? Have they released yeah. him? Are they keeping, or are we going to figure this out still? He signed with the Broncos. Oh, okay. Uh, so we yeah. have to fill the QB. And we, QB and I think people were upset that, cause he, he's, his contract was like not that much for like a year or two. And mm -hmm. it, like, we, we clearly could have done that. So people were kind of like, why didn't we just resign him? Um, but I think he wanted to be reunited with Sean Payton. Yeah. Also like for Stidham, like if you ask who won the last two weeks of the season, it's Stidham. He had yeah, a great little absolutely. resume builder for two weeks and then goes off and gets to, uh, get a good contract and like really yeah. shows talent. So Stidham, Stidham, good job on you Stidham for making the most out of your two starts. Yeah. Okay. I got a couple storylines as we wrap up and a couple questions going into the season here because yeah. the, the week of the draft, we get Lamar resigns. Right. Eric, yeah. Eric Rogers officially becomes a jet. Mm -hmm. so two big moves there. Uh, Jimmy G is a Raider. Um, so here's some couple questions, a couple hypotheticals for you. I want you to answer. All right. Are the Ravens a bigger threat, a lesser of a threat or no change whatsoever going into this year? Yeah, that's a good question. I was kind of thinking about it. Um, I think they were super happy that they re-signed Lamar. Uh, they signed Lamar. And they, his contract, like he doesn't, his the amount of money he's guaranteed was not nearly as much as his full contract. So I don't foresee, like sometimes when you, when a player signs a huge contract, they, you know, they don't play as well because they're like, well, I, right. Um, I kind of, I mean, I hate to throw Darren Waller under the bus because he was my favorite player on the Raiders. I kind of feel like that happened a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, I know he got injured and everything, but um, I don't see that Darren happening. Darren Waller injured? I never would have thought that. <laughs> I, right? Like, <laughs> Permanently And he was like making rap videos. <laughs> <laughs> Where did he go again? Yeah. I forgot. Yeah. Uh, he, he went to the Giants. Giants. Oh, interesting. Interesting for yeah. that roster too. Giants are on the upswing. They're, they're looking good. Yeah. Um, I think the Ravens are probably about the same. I mean, I didn't follow their draft entirely, but it seems like they, they, like they got that, um, say flowers guy. That's sort of a wide out. It was the, the best wide out. Um, and I think they, they did some defense. They got some defensive players too. Um, but I think division wise, like the Ravens are in a, pretty tricky division because they've got right. the Bengals and I think Pittsburgh is on the up too, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. um, All right. Make your call. Bigger, yeah, so bigger threat, I, lesser or no change? I would say no change. Oh, <laughs> my, my unexpert opinion. Okay. No change. Yeah. All right. Number two off season question. Will the chiefs repeat? No. Um. <laughs> no emphatic. No, I can't. I can't allow that um this is like I, for moral reasons you're yeah. going no this is a inner inner division i think the eagles are like a win it all in win it all mode like the way mm. they drafted that's right yeah jalen hurts big contract that too is the yeah. other um offseason storyline you're right yeah i think they're they're coming for blood i think they thought they were like they were gonna win and um yeah i i think they're not gonna like have a total like Super Bowl hangover. So okay, no, no on the Chiefs repeat. What will the Jets' record be next year? Yeah, this was like a really hard. My gut says like maybe they win ten games. Aaron Rodgers is a great quarterback, but I also think like it's it's going to be a new system new gelling together I, I um i don't see them going to the super bowl but i see them you know improving improving from zach wilson how could they oh wait yeah <laughs> zach wilson was terrible <laughs> maybe aaron Rodgers won't go after the moms on the team and oh. you know everybody will get along so okay 
<laughs> uh, follow up question: What will Aaron Rodgers' facial hair be by October seventeenth? We don't know. Oh, Nobody man. knows. Yeah, yeah. He Aaron Rodgers is a total hippie. Like, right? He, I know people think he's a jerk, but he's really he's just. I think a total I think hippie. you're right. I think he's like a free spirit hippie, yeah. like agitator Berkeley. at heart. Yeah, because yeah, <laughs> people forget he's a NorCal guy. Yeah, and he's like, like whatever you tell him, he's gonna do the opposite. Yeah, I just think right. he's a difficult person i don't think he's right or wrong or anything i just think he's difficult maybe he's a taurus i don't know hmm. <laughs> interesting well we're gonna keep an eye on this facial hair I, and last question the hardest one yeah what's the raiders record next year i'm gonna be optimistic and i'm gonna say i would be i would be really thrilled if we won 10 games me too. Me too. 10 I'm picking 11. 10. Yeah. I'm picking 10 and I'm with you. I'm, I'm a little I think on the 10 is realistic. We I think 10 optimistic. is realistic. <clears throat> and yeah. I, yeah, I can't wait to see the schedule come out, but I think 10 is realistic. We have McDaniels. We have Jimmy G, system yeah. quarterback. He, take, he might take instruction really well. He's yeah. the opposite of Aaron Rodgers. If you tell Aaron <laughs> Rodgers, like, hey, we need to throw in the middle. He's like, I like it up the sideline. Jimmy G is like, tell me to do it. I'll do it. So yeah. I think you're the opposite. Yeah. That, so, Jimmy G does it? seem like a very agreeable dude. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> he's a politician. Uh, this is our guy. This is yeah. our guy. Yeah. He's, but he's a dark horse too. He's sort of got that. He kind of, like in the picture that he took for his like Raiders press conference, he kind of looked like Jake Gyllenhaal in like a dark way. And I was hmm. like, hmm, okay. Like maybe Taylor Swift will bait him. And <clears> that'd be cool. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That would be good. She's available. That would be, yeah, that would be very Las Vegas, I feel. That would be very, yeah, she could do shows yeah. right there in Vegas. He's in yeah. Vegas. He's going to wear the suits. Yes. She yeah. could be in the in the luxury box. This is our year. This is oh. our, like, remember when Jessica Simpson was like uh, dating Tony Romo? Yeah. In the press box? This is what we need. We need a little spice off the We field. do. Yeah. Sure. Derek Carr's wife is a lovely person, but I think she was pretty private, so. We need like a, yeah. We're, we're divorced from Derek Carr. That's all. That's, yeah, that's old news. Yeah, they're all like in New Orleans, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Jim. Jim the Baker. She's at Baker underscore Raider at. And um, will you give me the update on the cookies when they finally yes. arrive? I'll make a video um, and make sure yeah. that. Um, and I want a I fair can... critique. I want to see yeah, what. Absolutely. Oh, I'm very strict. Um. <laughs> I've, I've heard your thoughts on flan i believe you yeah <laughs> these are worse than custard in my car no just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> all right thanks jim yeah thanks so much this is go really raiders go raiders okay that is it that is the episode that is the sunday night talk off season edition jim the baker joining me she is overly positive of the las vegas raiders this year and you can tell why. We got Jimmy G. He's ours. He belongs to us now. Hopefully my cookies make it too. Get a fair and honest critique. That's what we need in this world. Fair and honest critiques of cookies. Thank you everyone for listening. And don't forget if you want to see me doing live stand-up comedy. May 5th, this Friday, 8 p.m. in Burbank, California. Flappers Comedy Club. Let me know you're coming. We're going to have a great show. So for Jem the Baker, for me, Patrick Ramirez, thank you everyone for listening to the Sunday Night Talk on the Running It Back channel. See you soon.